Hi guys, welcome to the first live for 2024 with me, Clarice. How is everyone doing? It's a little bit of a different vibe for me because it's um it's in the middle of the day on a weekday. Well, it is Friday, but still. Feel free to um write your hi hellos in the comments so I know exactly who's here. And then we will begin in a couple of uh, seconds, not even minutes. Um, how's the volume? How's the views? If you could just let me know in the comments if everything is good. That's always my number one concern because you never know with technology. Hi, Rubini. Hi, Usha. Yeah, because on my screen, I have all these lights happening over here. I told you guys about my new setup, uh, which I'm ecstatic about. The videos are looking great, but I've never done this setup for a live before. So let me know in the comments there. Volume is decent, so it should be higher. Let me see. Like, how about now? Is it any better? Let me know. Yeah. Or let me know if that made a difference, rather. That should be what I'm saying right now. And, uh, and then we can start. Same. Okay. Well, okay. As long as you guys can hear me. Uh, hi. Alexandra. Okay, awesome. So I will start. Uh, for those of you who are new, I'm Clarice. I love to paint watercolor flowers and I do um, a live on the YouTube channel here once a month. And the new timing is second Friday of each month. This is our first Friday live for 2024. Um, Okay, so the so today we're going to be painting. I'm scaling back because it's like the first it's the first month of a new year and I want to dial back for those who are new or who want a revision of things. So we're going to be painting loose and whimsical. I've decided we're going to do roses with a nice sort of blended background. So we're going to take this extremely make it extra romantic rather. This is something I had done for Patreon. This is not what we're painting today, but we're taking elements from here, like the faded background to get that nice romantic look. We're going to get our muted tones in with some of the foliage in the background. And again, I'm going to scale back to show you guys to do the basic flower. And then I want you guys to be able to practice from here and do your own thing. Okay. So learn the techniques with me or practice with me, paint with me, how, however you want to describe that, and then go off on your own and try it again. Um, this is something I used to say a lot in my videos and then I stopped because I thought in my head, oh, that's obvious, but no, it's not obvious. So I'm going to repeat it again. So I'm going to put this aside and we'll talk about my, my supplies really quickly. And, uh, here we go. So for paper, I'm going to be using my Legion Stonehenge and it's hot press. For colors, um, I've decided not to add pink. I always have pink. If you've been following me since my pink holiday series, uh, pink is one of my favorite colors. Uh, but today we're going to keep things warm. And I've got the Cadmium Red Hue. I've got... Uh, Gamboge hue and I've got Naples yellow. Now the Naples yellow and the cadmium red hue go so well together. It's super pretty and so that's why I wanted to do that. I have this uh, Gamboge hue because it goes really well with the greens that I have picked for our foliage. So I've got hooker's green for our nice darker green and then I've got sap green. However, if you've been following me for a while, you'll know I don't like to use my greens 
especially like the hooker's green or emerald and stuff by itself because I think it's too bright and it clashes with my bright flowers. So I have sepia hue handy. So when you mix a little bit of sepia with the hooker's green, it gives you a beautiful woodsy sort of green. And so that's what I want for, for this here. Now I'm just going to adjust the lighting a bit because I think I'm going to go with my gut feeling that it's a little bit too dark. Same thing with the uh, sap green. If you want to mix it in, if you think it's too light, you want to mix a little bit of the sepia hue with it and figure out um, what's your favorite, go with that. I encourage you guys to get in tune with what you like and get used to mixing colors because that's that's really um, a fun thing to do, especially with watercolor when you're blending two colors. The wet on wet situation is all about making sure you've got beautiful colors that when you drop them two together, they blend really well, giving you a fantastic effect. So that's like number one. Okay, so for brushes, we're using my tried and true Princeton Neptune number six, and then the Princeton Velvet Touch number four. I have the Princeton Oval in half an inch handy because we are going to need a brush, a nice thick brush to dampen our background so we can get some nice, beautiful blends and bleeds for our roses, okay? I also have my Princeton Aqua Lead brushes handy. This is just in case I need additional brushes and I have them on hand. I've got a number six and a number eight and they're just like a regular sound, uh, sound, regular round <laughs> brushes. Okay, and paper towel, water, and we're good to go. <clears throat> so we're gonna start off with doing a little bit of mixing and I just realized I'm not seeing any immediate that's okay we'll just use the Dalaroni set of 48 palette that I have here I always get the back and the front mixed up with this it's pretty messy on here and this is where the paper towels come in handy so I just like to take a little bit of water and just wipe it out this is simply because I have not been well prepared for this portion of our live. So excuse my habit here. So now I guess I can use this area for my greens. I'm going to quickly get uh, a little bit more to clear out the blue in this area. Because we've got oranges and, uh, and yellows, so I'm just going to use this section here. Whoops. Make sure nothing's going to fall down. Okay, so we're ready. Okay, so first thing I want to do is my main flower is going to be the two colors that I mentioned in the beginning, which is the cadmium red hue and the Naples yellow. So we're going to start off mixing with the number four because the, the smallest brush is the brush that I like to start off my rose centers with. And you guys will see that in a bit exactly what I mean by that. And then I like to use a thicker brush like a number six or even a number eight to sort of spread the color around. So we're going to use that basic tried and true technique of starting off with your darkest hue and then using water or a wet brush to kind of spread the color around. And the number one thing I want you guys to keep in mind while we're doing this is white space. We need to have white space between our layers of C curves or comma strokes, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I call them C strokes. So keep that in mind. And here we go. We're just going to mix some of this color. <clears throat> and it's a nice rich orangish red color just brilliant brilliant is the word for it and because we're doing like these two-toned roses because again you guys know that I love doing two tones in most of my paintings it just adds so much more depth um, and whimsical, romantic 
ness I guess if that's if that's a word to your end results. I keep my paper towel over here. I'll make sure you guys can see everything. Okay. And then let's get some of the maple yellow, which is like a pretty um, peachish short sort of color. And I'm just keeping that handy off to the side because once I have done my center, I would like to get a little bit of that on my bigger brush and kind of mix that in as I am pulling color from the center. So here's what we're doing. Um, we're going to start off with getting some of the cadmium red. And I'm keeping my number six handy. And I'll just get a little bit of that Naples yellow on it from now. But it's a very watered down version of it. So my brush is nice and full with color, uh, water and a little bit of color. And my number four is full of color mainly. So the first rows I'll do around this area. I like to always start the left lower section. And we're doing, I want to make sure you guys can see this properly. We're doing little C strokes. So we start off from the center and we start tiny. And feel free, because we're going loose, to kind of hold the brush slightly higher. And have a little bit of control as to how much, um, like, because we want to keep that white space in there. So make sure you're keeping white space in there. And now I'm going to switch <clears throat> to my number six and we're pulling from the center. And by pulling all I'm, all I mean is we're lightly touching the edges of where we touched our cadmium, um, cadmium red, is it? And we're creating, continuing to create these C strokes, but on a larger scale and making sure that we have ample enough white space in between our strokes. It's the white space that gives us that whole feel for light and yeah, pretty much light. The darker areas are the shadow areas that will be depicting shadow for us. So towards the end, I like to have like that nice floppy petal. So I'm getting more water on my brush and I'm kind of lightly pressing down my brush to get those nice floppy, wider looking petals. And so now what we've created is this beautiful dark in the center, blooming out into like this light orangey hue. At this point, I'm going to flip back to my number four. And I want to add a couple of strokes in the area in the center just so that we get that nice dark to light effect happening. What I also want to do next is because we've got a beautiful blend, like a soft blend, I'm going to get a little bit of that cadmium hue onto the brush that had the, the naples. And I want to drop a little bit of that into my petals at the bottom as well. Now, for the fun part that we're going to be doing here, which is our blooming effect. You all are ready for this. What I'm going to be doing is, and we'll be using a lot of this in the upcoming uh, minutes, over the upcoming minutes. So I'm going to take my number six and I'm going to lightly touch this area. Now these areas at the very bottom have a lot of water. And so I'm going to lightly touch one side of it and pull it outward. And I'm simply having that base portion of my, of my rows blend into the background.
Now, because the color is so light, what is happening is that the color is bleeding from there, going outward, but then it's kind of fading off into white. And if it isn't for you, because your colors may be darker, just wash off your brush. And then with just water on it, extend the edges so that you're not getting a sharp edge of just color, but you're blending that pretty peach out into the background. And that's all there is to this technique. Now for the center, once this dries up, before this dries up completely, what I'm also going to do, because it would be nice to kind of have a more startling effect, is adding a little bit of the peach right into our base areas where the petals are new, the new layers of petals rather. Maybe even in the area where we just dampen just a tad bit to kind of allow it to seep into the background. And then I'm just kind of using water to blend this into our damp background. It is important that all these steps that we're doing are done while everything is still damp. Okay, and I keep looking upward just to sort of make sure that y'all are able to see what I'm doing properly. Now, I always like to add a third layer to my florals. So we've got our base layer, which is light. We've got our second drop of color, which is a medium. And then we've got a darker hue, which is the third layer. You can feel free to do this or you can completely omit this if you're brand new and this is getting too complicated for you. <clears throat> but I like to take a little bit of sepia, mix it in with the main color that we used. <clears throat> now sepia is a very, very dark color. So make sure you're getting just a tad bit of it to get a darker version of your cadmium red. And once we have that, I'm getting a little bit of that and I'm lightly adding it to our center area here and I just want it to blend in to give us that nice blend of color showing us a little bit of darker areas within our rows very selectively I'm just adding that in and this is what will show us the shadow areas now the same technique I'm using here is the same technique we use. Um, the technique I'm using here, let's rephrase that. The technique I'm using here is the same technique I've been using for a lot of my other videos, including the most recent one on my YouTube channel, which is the, the Tuscan uh, countryside video for the sky. So if you have been doing watercolor for a while, this is something that can be used throughout so many different mediums. It really depends on the effect that you're looking to get. Okay, so we've done one rose. Now I wanna do another one. Let's do this one more time so this way you're getting the hang of it. This time, um, this time let's go in for another, we'll use the exact same colors, the same technique. I'm gonna zoom by this one and I want to see, well, assuming you guys are gonna show me after, I want to see how you guys do the second time round. The first time round is always toughest, especially if it's something new or a new concept. The second time round, because you've practiced it once, is so much easier and you'll find this out soon. Okay, so I have realized I've mixed my brushes. So I have the orange on the number six. And because you guys do it exactly the way we did it previously. I'm going to go ahead and do it a tad bit different. Switching my brushes around a little. Actually, no, I won't. I won't disrupt you guys. I'll use the same thing. 
So number four for my center. And let's do this rose facing a little bit upward. And then going in with the number six muted version of my Naples yellow pressing down and doing our C strokes making sure we've got ample enough white space in there and look at those blooms of cadmium red happening Sometimes your, um, your color is going to kind of just go off in different directions. And if you need or feel the urge to go in and help guide the color in which direction it needs to go, go ahead and do that. I always say, like, if you're feeling like you want to do something, like you see how something goes on a page and you're like, mm, I'm just itching to do this, go ahead and do it. Because this is how two things can happen. It can really work out in your favor or it might really flop. But rest assured, you're learning something from the experience and um, it's just paper. You can always try it again and now you know what not to do or now you know what to do. So two different ways of looking at it, right? So I'm just adding my additional little strokes at the bottom of this. Give us a nice little blend of that color in. And then taking some of that Naples yellow. I'm adding more of my strokes around here. And I love how these two colors blend. It's so pretty. It's like a pretty um, peachy sort of color. Now I'm going to get some of the sepia mixed in with the red and I'm dropping that in sooner. And then just sort of blending some of those areas where the petals are ending here. Switch my brush to get this. Now we'll do a rosebud somewhere in here. But for now, I'm just picking areas that I want to just take my number six and blend it out. I'm also going to dampen this area at the top of this flower here, and you will see why in a minute or less than a minute. We're going to add some green. So for the green, I will use my number six because I want nice, loose um, bits of foliage. And we'll start off with mixing some of the hooker's green. No, this is sap. Actually, let's start off with using the sap green because that's a nice base. And this area is damp, so it's going to give us a beautiful light background. And then we'll go in with the hooker's green mixed in with some of the sepia. Feel free to switch it around if you want to. Um, this is just something I want to try. So here we go. Starting from here, I'm going to do my first like leaf. And then doing another one here. And because these areas are still majorly damp, it's going to give us a blend into the background and this one seemed to have dried up quicker and I know this area is dried up fairly yeah it's dried up so 
So I'm dropping these hints of green here and there just so that it can blend into our background, okay? Perfect. Now we're going to mix in some of the hooker's green and sepia. So again, sepia is a very dark color. So go easy and you can always add more Go easy. You can always add more if you, you know, want to control that darkness or if it's not dark enough. So here we go. I've got a nice enough darkness to this. I'm going to start off with adding some right here. I'm kind of going over my lay of um, leaves already, and this is because I want to get that nice overlap happening and I have enough control on my brush so I'm able to use the same thing to create additional um, leaves on top again overlaying on top to get that nice blend in before it completely dries off and all I'm doing with for these strokes for our leaves is you using the tip of my brush lightly grazing to get that nice stroke and then pressing down and trailing off you'll get a thinner lay if you don't have enough water on your brush so just get more water and go back on there and you want to keep things loose so we're not sitting in there and drawing our almond shaped leaves we're literally with the flick of a hand, kind of just practicing to get some nice, loose looking leaves. Um, let me see, I'll just add some here. We want to keep some room for our, our bud. And just like with the, with the flowers, from dark in the center, going light outside, we want to make sure as we go outward, our outer leaves are lighter. So add more water to your brush as you're doing those leaves just so you can get a lighter version of it and you're getting a nice dark to light same thing here and do that same running with that same idea here okay so we've got this now. I want to get a little bit of yellow in here. So I'm going to use the gamboge. I'm liking how that gamboge looks with some of this green that I have mixed. So just getting in more. We're going to drop a couple of these. couple of strokes in between where I've laid some of this green and it is bright guys but it's something that I've never really done before and I really like how it kind of offsets against the um the orange so just dropping in some of this color remember in the beginning of this video I spoke about making sure you pick colors that are fun and when they mix that they give you a really nice startling effect So I'm going to end um, these edges here with something similar to this. So using the tip of my brush, I'm kind of lightly grazing and adding a little bit of um, thinner looking leaves on there. So it looks like maybe it's part of some other kind of foliage. And then feel free to drop in some of that darker green in there because that's exactly what I want to do. To these guys just in certain areas especially like the main stem area that sort of thing lost video okay hold on
guess it's my battery, which I had just charged. We should be back. Uh, almost there, guys. One second. Oh, we're back. But I'm going to wait to see. There's a little bit of a delay on the live, so I caught your comment a little bit later, but better late than never. So here we are. We're back. Okay. So, so we just finished doing our little Lucy bits over there. We're going to do a little bit of an extension. Let's see. A little bit of an extension here, and that's where we'll do our bud. And so for the bud, because I like to do my flowers in threes, and um, we've got two already. Let's do a little bit of a bud. So for the bud, we're going to start off with doing our bottom section of it. So we get a nice bleed from the green bottom to the yellow, orange, red, whatever you want to call it, uh, flower portion of it. So taking some of the mixed color we have. Actually, before we do that, I'm dropping in some of this darker hue still in here because we were we were meant to do that and I lost um, connection and then forgot about it. But here we go. Remember, again, repeating what I said in the beginning. You have your light. Um, you have your light base color. You have a medium color and then you have a darker hue to really enhance. And because it's a loose style of painting, a lot of the times you lose out the details when you, the lesser color you have, um, the less detail you're able to see. The less loose detail, let me rephrase that. So I'm dropping these in mainly in the areas where it's connecting to the flower to kind of show a nice shadow and I'm very loosely dropping it in. We don't, we're not perfecting things. We're kind of dropping color in at this stage to see how it flows, what are the effects we get, especially if you're new um, and new to loose style of watercolor. Make sure you're not painting in all your, your white space because we need the white space that also tells us a story. And enjoy the aspect of dropping in this color and watching it bloom into your greens and such. We're going to come back with our darker hues and add a little bit more darker detail later. But right now I wanted to catch this in this time because a lot of the areas were still um, damp. So when you drop color in an area that's damp, you get a nice smooth blend. Okay, so now we're going to our rose uh, rosebud. So getting in some of this darker hue that I have mixed, I'm going to go ahead over here and just add a rosebud, although that kind of looks like a bud, so maybe we should just play off that area. I like that idea. Let's go with that. This is called going with the flow. <laughs> this is what I do all the time when you have no plan and you're kind of just... Um, won't say winging it because we know what we're painting but a stroke looks that was meant to be a leaf but now looks like a bud so let's piggyback off that idea and extend and create another branch so to speak 
and add an intentional bud this time. So I'm just doing a little shape, like an oval shape at the top, triangular shape at the bottom, and then going in with our number six, we're going to get that nice orange mixture and just drop that in here. Again, keeping it loose and also notice I'm going to do something that I rarely do. I do it, but I rarely do it in videos because I'm too busy chit-chatting and sharing my my thought process. Um, but I'm washing off my brush and I'm going to take off some of the color at the top of this, this bud over here. And this is literally just to show a little bit of depth in it and a little bit of detail while not really adding detail. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense to you. But this is also something I love about watercolor because it's just like you can add color, but you can also subtract color depending on when. If it's dried up, that's harder to take off. You might not quite get the effect you're looking for. So beware. So I'm getting some of this darker hue, the sepia mixed in with the orange, and I'm going to drop that in here in the area that I've just sort of taken off color. And this is just to sort of give us an idea, like a hint of where the center is. And that's it. Um, I might even drop in, let's drop in a little bit of this maples on this side. Let's do that. Okay, how about that? <clears throat> All right, so we've got our little bud. I want to do a couple more of these loose green leaves. So I'm switching back to my number six. And um, this time, before we actually get to doing our leaves, get your big brush handy. And let's dampen some of this area over on this end here. So I'm lightly kind of going around my leaves. I'm dampening this area and I'm making sure I've got enough water to keep us going for, I don't know, maybe at least two minutes. So if you can kind of put your head downward and see that there's enough water, we don't want puddles, just FYI. So swipe away the puddles, make sure it's nice and damp. I'm going to get a little bit of dampness happening in between our two buds as well. And again, you're going to see why. This is another technique to um, loose style of painting, especially if you're using those nice, like whimsical looking backgrounds, which is what we're trying to do here. Anyone want to guess what's going to happen now? Write in the comments. I'm giving it a couple of seconds because I know there's a delay. So if anyone is guessing, there's your chance. Okay. We are going to be doing a splatter. So I'm taking the green. Feel free to cover the areas that you don't want covered with the splatter. So for instance, I don't want it on the rose. So I'm just going to lightly drop that here. Do a splatter there. Um, don't do what I'm doing and use a damp cloth to do this.
use um, something that's dry. Here we go. And we have our splatter. Okay. So now that we have our splatter, we can emerge and grow from this as well. So I'm taking some of the green that I have and I'm making sure that it is really, really watered down because now we want to go really light and get those nice soft blooms. If you want to get a tad bit of yellow in it maybe or something else, that would also help. Uh, actually, on that note, I want to get some of that uh, Naples yellow before things dry off. So give me a second to get some of that Naples yellow, mixing it in with that orangey hue, and just get some of that in. And then, washing off the brush, just go in and help this color around in with the green. And my paper is dried up already. So we're not getting crazy enough blends, but the idea is there. Okay, now I'm gonna go for my green and we're going to add. So I really like this area over here to get some nice loose looking leaves. So I'm going to do a little bit of a curve to kind of encompass this petal and drop this in. All I'm doing is doing very loose strokes, guys. Like we're not going for perfection. We're not looking for a perfect leaf. Um, we just need a semblance of an idea. And because it's green, the viewer is able to tell that it's a leaf. Not even doing a connecting, um, what's it called, um, stem for these leaves here. Literally just dropping in little lines of uh, starting from the flower and then kind of leaving the dabs of color to allow the viewer to interpret. Now, one thing to keep in mind as you're doing this with me is to make sure that you're pausing every now and then then to stand up and have a look and see is it too much do you need to scale back can you do more do you want to do more um, because many times i find when you're sitting and you're viewing your your artwork it looks one way and then you stand up <clears throat> and it looks entirely different so um make sure you're doing that every now and then okay on my screen up here because of the lights it looks very very um, um dark and i can't quite tell so i'm gonna stand up excuse my face for a second okay so i like how it looks i'm leaving this area deliberately open because once the live is done i think i want to add a couple more elements in here but i wanted to show you guys the basics of having those nice dreamy roses and having dreamy leaves to go with it. Okay, one last thing we are doing is adding our third layer of dark leaves because we did the first, we did the second, and we did a little bit of dark stems, but I want to add one more layer of the dark leaves. And this will be very... Uh, the word I'm looking for. This is going to be very selective. So you want to make sure that you're adding these leaves only in certain areas. So I'm mixing some of my sepia with my sap green and it's giving me like this dark um, olive green color. So a third variation of green is what's happening over here. So between these two roses, I like to have, you might like your, your blendy effect, but I like to have a little bit of extra detail just to sort of make things jump out a little bit more. So this area is damp, so excuse me while I quickly tackle this. What I'm going to do is just add a little bit of a line here and allow this green to bloom into that 
green stroke that I just did. And we're looking to create these little ideas of shadow, dark green into light green. And it kind of gives us that idea of shadow. That's what we're looking for. And you use this throughout. This was a, was this a lesson for Patreon? Uh, I think it was. So I'm adding some dabs of this dark green into these little areas here. Feel free to add tiny leaves as well if you want to give it more of a shape as opposed to just dabs of color. So I'm going to add some here. And because we're doing like a wet on dry technique here for this, you're going to get more of a startlingly dark effect and also um, solid edges. This area is very, very um, blended. So I'm going to add some of my leaves in here. And I'm using my number four. I think I'll use a little bit more sepia for this area because it is darker. And some of my leaves here are a little bit damp, so I'm going to take advantage of that and add a couple of strokes of this color in here as well. Kind of help that along. And I like this idea that's happening over here. So what I'm going to do is drop in another stroke and I'm going to extend a little loose looking stem and add more leaves. Anywhere you see it's damp, you're able to drop in another color and just get a beautiful blend and a bleed and it just kind of elevates your painting to the next level. So feel free to find those areas, try it out. And like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, and I keep repeating myself because repetition is good. This is how you learn. Um, the, like if it, if it doesn't look good and if it totally tanked on you, then don't worry, just don't do it the next time. But you're going to learn something out of the experience. Either it's going to be a happy accident or intentionally happy accident or um, something that you know now not to do. And let's do a little bit more over here. So I'm almost trying to kind of frame these roses a little. This guy is alone, so I'm adding a little bit more here on this side as well. Drop in a little bit of sepia in there. Drop in some sepia at the bottom here too because it needs it a little bit. And then I'm just smudging some of the green. And we're pretty much done. I know I said I wanted to do some stuff here, but I think I've taken away all that, all that space. So I might not even do anything there. But if you wanted to add, here's an idea. Say you did this with me today and you want to add some filler florals. These areas are good spots to kind of add some filler florals, assuming you went in a similar composition layout as myself. Oh, I got some smudges of green here. 
which I am going to paint and make it into something else, but we'll see. Um, and that is it, guys. Uh, any questions or comments, let me know. I want to read them from you right now. So if there's... <clears throat> leaves loosen up on the leaves yeah so if you guys are looking to loosen up on the leaves the video has stopped that's weird because it's still going on for me you guys can still hear me right and see me and see the video Okay. Yeah, so if you want to loosen up on leaves, I would suggest this whole whimsical background feel look to it. Dampen the area, then add in your first light layer. Wait for it to dry a little bit before you add in your second medium color. And then finally, once it's dry, go in and really add in your, your solid leaves. And you're just building up in interest and also dimension for your loose style of art it just i love it so i hope you guys love it too and the splatter splatter is always something nice i noticed i i smudged a little bit of my stuff but i'm gonna i'm gonna work on it a bit more before i do anything so i hope you guys enjoyed this and if you're watching the replay guys feel free to drop in your questions and i am happy to address them <clears throat> and yeah um I know it's the first it's the first video for 2024 and this is the style that we're going to be doing for the Tuscany watercolor retreat and so if anyone's new here and you're looking to do something for yourself consider the Tuscany watercolor retreat I'm putting the link below all the supplies will be sponsored by Princeton and my Mary so excited for that it's just happening in May all right, guys, thanks for joining me and we'll chat soon. I can't wait to see your work. So tag me on Instagram, okay? All right, have a lovely, lovely Friday.